Hey everybody, it is about 402 in the afternoon on this uh, Tuesday. I'm going to try to do this, <coughs> I guess you could say, as quickly as possible. Seeing as though um, my mom is supposed to be getting out of work by 430, but sometimes they let her off a lot earlier than that. And not knowing whether or not when my brother-in-law is going to drop off my nine-year-old nephew so he can go to work. But, anyway, this person, known as, we'll just call them NS, NS, if you will, NS, posted this about five days ago, oh, oh, essentially, probably six days ago by the time you read this, um, And they didn't upload it until recently. I don't know why. But basically this person, the title says it best. It says, NS has a question about Ian Flynn and Hershey. In other words, Hershey the cat. Now you might say to yourself, well, what question does he have? Give them to drink there. But again, you might ask yourself, well, what question does he have? Or they have, he or he, they or whatever you want to call them. What question do they have? Excuse me for a second. Sorry about that, folks. Had to let the cat back in the garage. But again, you might ask, well, what question do they have? Well, here's what they have to say. And I quote, Hey, guys. There's something that I've had my... Okay. Hey, guys. There's something that I've had on my chest... For quite a long time now. And I wanted to give my thoughts on it. You see, it's with Ian Flynn's writing and Hershey the Cat. This may sound like a harsh question, but do you guys think that Ian Flynn put the least effort into writing for Hershey the Cat? I mean... We haven't seen her get some lines since Sonic the Hedgehog 134. And after that, we got a cameo in 142 in Amy's story of becoming a freedom fighter. And she never made a solid appearance before Ian Flynn became the head writer of the comic. We did see a black and white female cat in Antoine and Bunny's wedding, 174, but... We went deeper into that in this blog, and they provide a link. Well, let me just add that that was Hershey, believe it or not. Now, continuing on, and this is what they said. Now, let's have a quick summary for how Ian Flynn wrote for Hershey, the, for Hershey so far. Hershey may or may not have been in the, the Cool It wedding, she was, in 70, 174. Hershey was mentioned in 187 and 188. Jeffrey stated that Hershey was undercover in 219. Her Jeffrey stated to Sally that Hershey was dead for a while in 223, but then told her that he and Hershey were on separate missions in 224 when Sally accused him as a murderer. <laughs> Jeffrey said he was told by the Fidel that Hershey died in 233 and was shown her clothing but didn't find her body at the scene. That's it for how Ian Flynn wrote for Hershey so far. 
There was, however, a black cat female legionnaire in Sonic Universe 37, and it was mentioned that there would be a mysterious figure in 237. But there was no mysterious figure in 237 nor 238, and it was stated that Lita and Lyko was a mysterious figure in 237. Some feel that Hershey was never meant to appear in 237 or 238. But if that's the case, then why would the description of 237 say that there would be two? Okay, but if that's the case, then why would the description... Okay, th I, let me correct this person on this. Let me correct, paraphrase this. It says, but if that's the case, then why didn't the description of 237 say that there were there would be two mysterious figures? And it also says that Hershey was beyond his control, according to what he said in a podcast one year ago. I'll explain more about it, the situation here. Another link provided. If the fact that Hershey was never meant to be in 237, then why make a setup with what you did in 223 and 30 in in 223 in Universe 37? I'll be a hundred percent clear. Or well, I'll be a hundred percent here. It feels like at this point. Okay, what they're saying is, well, e, okay, what they're saying here is basically they're asking, okay, why did Ian set it up to where pretty much he's saying Hershey would be 100% in those areas? Why would he do it? If, okay, well, you kind of make heads or tails of it yourself. But again, Refra uh, repeating that. It says, and I quote, If the fact that Hershey was never meant to be or never meant to appear in Sonic 237, then why make a setup with what you did in Sonic 2 233 and Universe 37? I'll be 100% here. Okay, I think they meant clear, not here. I'll be 100% clear. It feels like at this point, I think that's what they're trying to say. They just put here instead of clear or whatever. I'll be 100% clear. It feels like at this point, Ian Flynn was telling us, quote unquote, Oh, sorry. Hershey was never meant to be in, or never meant to appear in 237 and 238. And it was all Lita and Lyco along. And the black cat female legionnaire in 237 was just something to make you look like fools. So screw you, Hershey fans. <laughs> Yeah, so if I sound harsh, so if I sound harsh, but that, yeah, sorry if I sound harsh, but that's what it feels like if this is the case. But like I said, we don't know, and it's a debatable topic. Also, we don't know if Ian's to blame for the mess either. <laughs> Ken Penders did a good job, even though he's trying to claim her, and he gave her own story in Sonic Super Special number 11, the original Super Specials. Carl Bowlers did a pretty good job too, but why can't Ian Flynn, but why, excuse me here, but why can't Ian Flynn do a better job like, but why can't Ian Flynn do a better job like them? After all, Ian did say he had plans for Hershey, but we don't know what they are. This was stated by Ian Flynn in this post. Link provided. So what do you think about this situ situation? Please let me know in the comments. And that's by NS. But then they update for today. This is an update they posted today. Update for 4-16-2013. I also realized that Hershey made a cameo appearance in one of Jeffrey's flashbacks in Sonic Universe 43. And it was after Ian Flynn stated Hershey's involvement in current events was sidetracked due to circumstances beyond his control. 
could only be an exception to, exception despite the Pender's lawsuit, or was it a minor getaway? It was only a flashback of an older issue, so it might be an exception after all. All right. Well, after reading that, I can say this. Right now, just like Julie Sue, Linda, Remington, any other pen, Eliza's, any other Pender's related character, right now they're in flux. Right now, in other words, they cannot be seen. They cannot be used until this whole thing is settled. I do believe, without a shadow of a doubt. That Ian Flynn was going to use Hershey in 237 and 238. I truly believe that. You know, a lot of people can make up the excuse that excuse or side with Ian and say he never meant to do that. But I think he did. And in all honesty, no disrespect to Ian, I think he only said what he did when he said, oh, he was not, when he, Basically said that it was really Lita and Lyco instead of Hershey. I think the reason he said that was so that he wouldn't get in trouble. You see, if Ian Flynn would have came out and said, yes, that was supposed to be Hershey, but I can't do it right now because of the lawsuits, I don't think he wants to cause any more trouble than what's going on. So any more problems, if you will. But I truly firmly believe that. And... Despite what happens in the next few weeks or months with this lawsuit, if he is able in the future to be able to use these characters again some 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 way along the line, then maybe we will get an explanation. Maybe he will come out and say this is what it was meant to be. Maybe we'll get a director's cut of <laughs> of this entire story arc that's currently going on. And we'll see Hershey in the position that Lita and Lyco were in. So, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. And uh, that's all I'm going to say on it. You want to comment on NS's uh, thing, go ahead. And I'll talk to you all later.